Okay, so um, we're here, and uh, Mary's working with me to prepare this box. She's picked out a box that she really uh, finds intriguing because of the little window. Um, the first thing I'm giving her is a piece of sandpaper because uh, you want to rough up the surface. She probably will don't rough up, rough up the the, the uh, window part unless you really see that as part of your project already. But you can always rough it up later. So just rough this up, Mary, and uh, it doesn't have to take off all the paint, but you want to get it right in there. So. Right. I think it, as you work with objects in, in their creation, the physicality of it, your ideas start flowing. So it's very important to, to have sort of a little tug or a little relationship with the object right from the beginning you like it there's something about it that appeals to you so mary's picked this out and when you're finished with that we're going to use a product called that 100 and we're going to put this um as a sealer on the on on the box it's clear it dries clear but it will uh, seal the box so that the colors going on top of it, the other colors, will not discolor. Another thing I like about your box, Mary, is the hinges. These hinges are nice hinges. Some of the hinges on the cigar boxes are very uh, inexpensive and they're just sort of like staples. But these are actual hinges. So this is a good quality box you picked out. How many do you think you looked at? Um, maybe about 30. Wow. I had that many? Yes. <laughs> that was what I could find. Wow. That's what I do with fruit at the grocery store, too. <laughs> so we're just going to get this ready. Now, wh what about the inside of the box? What's that look like? Oh. This is interesting. Look at this. Can pull this right out. Do you want these in the box? You think? Um, no, I might even move them. You could have like a little shelf. You could. Anyway, um, but no, I don't need them now. You don't need them now, but we can use we can use one of them anyway as a tool. Okay. Okay. All right. So you've got that roughed up. Now what I want you to do is literally. Pour some of this stuff um, on the inside, and then we're going to take some of the excess and we're going to put it on the outside. We're going to cover this box entirely, but don't be like me and glue it shut because I've done that. So I won't put any on the edges here? Not at this point. Okay. You might do it later. So how much? Um, like a oh, tablespoon? Let's, let's, um, let's take a paper towel. And it's sort of dusted out, so you're not really... Okay. We get gritty. Paint. Yeah, you don't really want that to happen. Okay. All right. And the outside, too, sort of dust it. See, if you look at it, you'll see that it comes off on the paper towel. Yep. See? Okay. And now we're going to put this um, GAC... Golden acrylic me medium, 100, right in there like that. That's plenty. So that's like a tablespoon? Ah, uh, yeah, maybe a tablespoon. You might need more, you might need less. But I think for this whole box, you need... And you can take this, or you can take a brush um, and start to cover the surfaces, right? Now, the important thing is with a brush, if you're going to use a brush... Here's a little tip. Always soak your brush in water before you dip it in this acrylic medium so that the medium doesn't go into the ferrule. 
because when the medium goes into the ferrule and dries, it ruins your brush. I mean, there's a lot of brush cleaners you can use, but it's really a pain. And I, I don't like to spend my time cleaning brushes. They're too expensive to waste. Okay, the inside of this box is done. So maybe get a brush that you can use. Okay. And now just move this around. And get the other uh, yeah, parts of it. Yeah, now you can get the rest of it. Okay, do I need to keep this off of any glass or plastic? Like if I put this on the window, that would be good. What do you mean? There's a window here. Uh, so well, I wouldn't want to get this it, on it. It's going to dry clear, but it would mess it up. It wouldn't be okay. as uh, clear as you... I think it would make a film. There you go. So this is a meditative uh, process. And as you're doing it, think about what kind of images or who's this box going to be about? Who's this totem going to be about? Somebody in your family or is it going to be about an idea? All sorts of ideas that might be going through your head and you want to pay attention to those thoughts. You don't have to start off with a, an idea that's um, preformed, that you know what it's going to be. I, I would I would say try to avoid that if possible with artwork. I mean if you're making a product that's a different story. If you're doing a commission for somebody that's a different story but if you're making a piece of artwork for yourself you really want it to be open-ended. Does this need to be like really smoothed out? You said it's going to dry clear, but like, uh, you can does actually it smooth it out. Um, you can smooth it out. I'll show you a very good product. This is a good paper towel that I love. These are shop towels. They're sturdy, and you can lay them on top. Let me show you. You can lay them on top. And it, it creates a very nice, oh, okay. uh, it, it picks up just enough. I'm trying to get the corners so that right. there's not little pools of this. So then you can, you can take this, you see what I'm saying? Look, mm -hmm. you can get in there like this and just sort of blot up the excess that's pooling. Okay. Do I need to worry about, like, this isn't going to glue it shut, right? I just have little bits of... Ah, uh, it's, it's amazing that when it glues shut, it's really... Sh You're efficient. You're all set. Okay. Yeah, keep it open. Okay. And, you're, and then put the brush in the water, and you're all set. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is... <coughs> I've already put the GAC 100 on this box. I've already done that. I'm going to be using black gesso for this. I've been looking forward to doing this. So I'm kind of I'm working with the character of the box. This is black gesso. <coughs> Sorry for my cough. And I've already put the gag on. And like I said, this box was... worked on by my granddaughters one one afternoon one morning when they were here visiting and they they did some coloring on it i love the marks that they made i want to incorporate some of the marks that they made into this box and i think i, I think i've got an idea for this box already that i've been thinking about i mean i've been looking at it for a while now thinking about what it's going to be about and um, I'm going to let it develop, but I want some of these colors from what they, they did months ago to, to show through. So I'm using this gesso almost like a paint. I'm covering up some of this. I'm looking at it as I'm doing it. it as you can see, I'm not, it's not like I'm painting a wall. It's like I'm painting 
a picture. Always looking at what you're doing. And looking at what you like, what you want to keep, what you want to have other people see. I don't mind some of it being thick. I don't mind texture. I love texture, so that doesn't bother me. I like it. But I like texture, and I want to preserve texture, so... The tool that I'm using, which is a piece of wood from a from the other cigar box. Is making nice textures. I like some of these gold letters. These gold letters are intriguing to me as I'm looking at them. I don't want to cover all those up. I don't necessarily want Nicaragua to be an entire word. But I definitely like that thought of some letter forms just barely showing through. And I'm going to take some, uh, some of the paper towel that I love. Paper towel. And I'm going to see if I can... Let's see if I rub a little bit. Some of them come through. I can I can make some appear again. And some I'm, I'll have disappear again. This becomes very intuitive, very intuitive. I, this is the way I like to start work personally in my own artwork has become much more intuitive than it ever was. And free, too, because uh, I'm much more aware of the fact that there's it's really impossible to make mistakes.